Prasad just gave half my speech for me, so thank you. <laughs> so I don't have a clicker. All right, let's try this again. So I graduated from Michigan State 180 days ago. And since then, I've been in 62 different locations, which includes 14 countries, 16 states, two trains, the floor of JFK Airport, and a goat farm. Now, this is not where I expected life would take me when I started college. I figured that by this time I would have this prestigious corporate job that I would be climbing the corporate ladder, inching closer to this promotion and an ever more impressive salary and job title, right? Because that's what people expect you to do with an expensive degree. So then I met this kid. And when I met him, he was much older than this picture implies. His name is Brett. And he emailed me my sophomore year of college and he said, I'm a, I'm a student entrepreneur and I hear you are too. How about we get coffee and see if we can help each other out? And I figured, well, yeah, why not have coffee with this stranger? Never expecting that it would be a very pivotal point in my college career. And you see, Brett became one of my best friends, one of those best friends that changed your life. And one day I was reflecting on this and my curiosity got the best of me. I couldn't help but wonder if one new person could have such an effect on my life, what would a year of meeting new people do? So I figured there was only one way to find out. And I launched 52 cups of coffee, my year-long experiment in caffeine and conversation, where each week for a year, I would have coffee with a stranger and write about what I learned in the process. And let me tell you, I learned a lot in the process. Through getting recommendations from friends and reaching out to people that I thought looked interesting, I met a very diverse set of people from a 16-year-old Native American girl in my hometown and this reformed homeless man to self-made millionaires and best-selling authors. And I could tell you guys a lot of stories about the people I met, but I want to focus on the ones that led me to this nomadic lifestyle. And the first one is Cup 15. His name is Ruben Derdarian. And I met him in September of my senior year, right around when that senior year anxiety started to kick in, where I had this this paralyzing fear that the first day, the day I graduated was the first day of the rest of my life. And if I didn't have the perfect plan and the perfect job, I would irreversibly be ruining the rest of my life. Well, Ruben's story taught me something about plans because see, his plan after he graduated from college was to go to grad school and get a degree in biology. And then he would get his PhD and eventually become a researcher or a professor. But during his first year at grad school, his brother-in-law's business started to fall apart. So he decided he would take a year off of college and move to Michigan and help his brother get his business back on, it, back on its feet. And so while he was there, he took a part-time job doing medical sales. And he realized unexpectedly that he was really good at medical sales. And so his part-time job became a full-time job. And then he went from a salesman to a manager, and then an upper manager. And then all of a sudden, he decided that he wasn't going back to grad school and then he was offered a position as a CEO. Now, a CEO of a medical sales company is much different than a research professor at a university. And by the time Ruben graduated, he had been the CEO of five different companies, three of which he started on his own. And so when I told him that I was so worried about finding this perfect plan, he said, all right, you need to relax. Because I promise you, your life is not going to go according to plan. And that's OK. There is no such thing as a perfect plan or a perfect job. It's about working hard at whatever job you're in and always shooting for a higher goal. He said, if I could do that, I would create the perfect plan. So I left Cup 15 feeling really assured, but then the insecurity set in, right? It's like, I know that there are other people that are, that are more talented than I am, and people that have a better skill set or more experience. And all of a sudden, I had this growing list of limiting factors for reasons why I couldn't succeed. But then I met Cup 17, a student named Peter Pasek, who's an MSU grad student who loves to travel and also loves to play soccer, or loves soccer and loves to travel. He also has cerebral palsy. And, and so if you saw him, you would think, wow, poor guy. He can't get around without a walker or a wheelchair. So you would think he can't pursue his passions. He can't do what he loves. But if you talk to him for two minutes, you would find out that nothing is further from the truth. Five nights a week in the spring, you will find him playing I Am Soccer right alongside a bunch of rambunctious, fully able 20-something-year-olds. And he frequently makes trips to Europe by himself. In fact, 
Six months after I met Peter, I found myself, I am not very good at technology. I, I found myself in his hometown in Poland, sharing cup 40 with his grandmother, who was sharing stories of being 18 years old when World War II broke out. Stories that I could only understand because Peter was there translating her Polish into English and my English into Polish, which is a beautiful example of how you never know where a new connection will take you. But what I really learned from Peter was this. Our limitations only stop us if we let them. If you want something badly enough, you can find a way to make it happen. But it's not going to be easy. I am pushing the wrong button or something. Um, it's not going to be easy, which I learned from Cup 36, Tom Izzo. Now, Tom is the head basketball coach at Michigan State. He is a hero on MSU's campus and a very well-respected coach in the basketball world. People really believe in his coaching abilities. But as we were talking, I realized that wasn't always the case. When he was 29 years old, he was working 18-hour days, making a measly $4,000 a year as a, an assistant manager, getting more and more phone calls from his mom saying, honey, maybe it's time you give up this dream and just get a real job. But he didn't listen because he believed in himself, and he was determined that he was going to work as hard as it took for as long as it took and make incredible sacrifices so that he could reach his dream of becoming a head coach. And the hard work and dedication paid off. In 1995, he became the head coach of Michigan State's basketball team. And in 2000, they won their first NCAA national championship. Now, I know that that doesn't sound like very much fun, working really hard for a really long time. But the thing is, if you're doing what you love, it's worth it. The most fulfilled people I met were the people that worked really hard and had the courage to pursue what they really loved to do. Like Chad Badgero, who quit his job as a teacher and moved to New York City without a job or a place to live because he dreamt of making it on Broadway. And he did. He succeeded on Broadway and now he runs his own production company in Michigan. Or Mike Wardian, someone once dared Mike that he couldn't run a marathon. And so he set out to prove him wrong, and in the process realized he loved running. So now he runs like a madman, and he makes a living being a sponsored ultramarathoner. He frequently runs and wins 50 and 100 kilometer races. Or C. Wozniak, who loved computer engineering so much, he spent his free time designing a computer that he would then work with Steve Jobs to use as the foundation for Apple computers that would then transform the personal computer industry. Or one of my favorites, Toria Blanchard, who is in Detroit, Michigan. She had what she called this Fight Club moment, where she decided she wasn't as happy as she could be. And so she quit her job and cashed in her retirement fund so she could open Good Girls Go to Paris Crepes in Detroit. And it took off. She now, or she was recently recognized by Barack Obama at the White House for her contributions to entrepreneurship in Michigan. And I can tell you, I could keep telling you stories like this. And I think it's very easy to see how these stories have had such a transformative effect on me. And I think this transformation is so eloquently described by a quote from Cup 51, Elaine Rosenblatt, who just so happens to be Brett's mom, which I think is beautiful that she would help me finish a project that her son helped me start. We were in Chicago, Illinois, and she said to me, we have to learn how to stop looking from the outside in and discover how to look from the inside out. And this made perfect sense to me because when I first met Brett and when I started 52 Cups, I was so concerned with trying to be the person that everybody expected me to be. But through 52 Cups, I realized that is no way to live, to live your life. You have to figure out who you are, and where you want to fit into the world. And so I realized that I was a person who loved to travel and meet new people and share stories. So I decided that's what I would do. I was going to quit looking for a job and just travel after I graduated. And that explains how and why I became a nomad. I went to Europe for eight weeks, and then I got home and I went to New York and checked out the sites, and then I visited friends in San Francisco, and I spent some time at home with my family in Wyoming and, and took more than a couple road trips. And I've had the time of my life. And the crazy thing about it is that I was never worried about where this nomadic lifestyle would lead me. That fear that I had been so terrorized by when I started my senior year was gone. 
The fear of this uncertain future was replaced with this strange confidence because I had talked to enough people that I truly believed that if I could figure out what I loved and I could have the courage to do it and I did it really well, life would work out. And I was right. It wasn't until I stopped looking for that perfect job and started doing what I loved that that perfect job found me. The Michigan State Alumni Association approached me with a job offer that is centered around three things. They want me to travel and meet new people and share stories. The perfect job. And so, if I could leave you guys with one thing today, it would be this. But I want to take it one step further because I can tell you from experience, these three things are very hard to do. But I can also tell you from experience, if you're willing to reach out and ask people for help, and you're willing to help them in return, these three things become much easier to do. But I don't want you guys to take my word for it, right? I challenge you guys to find someone, make a connection with someone that you think is interesting, or someone who shares a passion, or someone has a career that's similar to the career that you want, and reach out to them. Invite them to have a cup of coffee. Be willing to sit down and share your story, and more importantly, listen to their story and the advice they have to give. While you can't predict where that new connection will take you, there's only one way to find out. Thank you. <laughs>